Yo, what's happening? It's St. Haraway. I'm live on the Kickback Show on Dash Radio. Check it out, bitch. To be honest with you, man, she's a bad thing. Fine as hell. Thick as fuck. Oh my god. That's my baby. Caroline, you divine. Mighty fine. Shorty, really blow the pie. That's true. Like a pro. <laughs> fuck you, thought. That's what's up, that's what's up It's the Kickback Show with your boy The DJ TJ Dash Radio Hollywood, California It's BET Weekend We got Saint in the building What up, Saint? What's going on? Welcome to LA Yeah, yeah, it's nice out here Um, So that's what's up So you work for Republic Records From what I understand I do, yes I do, that is real life And what's that like? It's the fucking jungle, man You know, it's, you know you Kill or be killed Right? That's the, the, I mean, you know, I seen something, Puff posted something a couple of days ago, said the music business has a 1% survival rate. Wow. 1%. Yep. That's not, that's not Republic. That's just the game. Right? Because Republic is pretty much owning 1% or, or owning 90, the other 99% <laughs> right now. <laughs> that's, just, that's just the game right now. It is what it is. You, you, you can't, you know. And when you say that, what do you, th- what do you mean by that? Like, own 1%. Like, if you're in the music industry, you got a it's, slim chance of making it. Be, be, just because it's guerrilla warfare, okay, and people, I, you know, I don't, I don't understand that people can really appreciate that. You know, it's not for the faint heart. It's not everybody ain't your friend. Is is you know, it is what it is. It's guerrilla out here. It is, it is. And how long you been in LA for? You just come in recently, or yeah, I, I, I just man, I just touched down um, maybe two days ago. Any in big shows or performances you looking forward to? You know, nah, you know, my thing is really just connecting with some creatives. Okay. You know, the shows, uh, you know, that the record's already out. Right. You know, they're already, it's already at the pinnacle. And when yeah. you say the record, who are you talking about? I'm just talking about in general. Like, any shows. Like, I know Cali had some last night. Um, yeah. A, a couple people performing. And he just dropped an album, right? Yeah, that shit's fire. That Love is. I hear... I heard some complaints, though. People were like, yo, the album's tight, but if DJ Khaled wasn't yelling all over, it'd probably be a little bit better. But that's that's Khaled though. It is right. What, if, what, do you, what else are you gonna you, expect yeah, from him? Yeah, that's Khaled. That is Khaled. Did you see his uh, EDC incident? No, nah, I didn't see that. Well, apparently he got uh, like booed off stage. Oh shit. Yeah, like at EDC at his performance, and they were yelling like "Yellow Claw," and then like they cut his mic off and all kinds of shit. And then, he, and then like he handed the mic or the the mic to the guy who was trying to kick him off the stage, and the dude's like, "Yo, they don't want you, bro." And it was like it was an all bad situation. Wow. But he was it, it all ended in a positive note. He was like, you know. God bless. Yeah, and and you know Cal- it is what it is. Khaled is a positive light, man. You ain't gonna sh- you ain't gonna shake Khaled. Oh no! Some people even claim it was like a publicity stunt, like it was meant to be. I don't know because he he has the album drop in all like you know you never know these days. I don't know, I don't know. So you work with uh, Amine, from what I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young kid out of Portland. Mm-hmm. Super creative, super focused, super driven. It's know? crazy because I grew up in Portland. And I've never even heard a dude. And then to see these people surfacing out of the P, I'm like, man, this is tight. Yeah, yeah. We we just actually put out this record. I, mean, I know we talked about playing some songs called Turf. The, the, it's it's super, you know, super introspective. And he talks about sort of uh, people coming into community into the community. What do you call that when people sort of just come into your community and they sort of gentrification? Okay, gentrification. Yeah. Yeah. So the record is super. It's super deep. It features Uncle Charlie Wilson. Um, it's a dope record, man. It's just a dope. He's like a true artist, you know. He's like it's it's real with this kid. We just turned in the album, so expect amazing things. Yeah, is there an al- is the album out or is it is set to release soon? It's set to, uh, July twenty eighth. July twenty eighth. That's gonna be a big day for them. Yeah, good for you. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, and how many songs are on that record? Do you know? Um, about. I know I don't even want to give it away. Okay. We'll keep a surprise. It so yeah. July 28th. Yeah, July 28th. Good for you. That's going to be good. That's going to yeah, be good. Yeah, yeah. Can we expect any performances from Amine? Do you know? Yeah, he's performing. I want to say he's performing today. Okay. BT, Here in LA? Yeah, BT Experience. So, if, you know. So, he was on the Freshman XXL. Yeah. That's that's huge. Yeah. Up and coming. Up and coming. And what are your thoughts on the rest of the uh, the crew that were elected for the XXL? You know, it's, it's all good. You know, I, I, I think... We got a lot of issues in the in the world, mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know, who's on a double XL cover ain't really, you know, it's all good. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. But, but, but shout out to uh, my man Dash and my man Pat and and Playboy Cardi. Right. You know, shout out to those guys. They putting on. Shout, you, shout out to everybody on the cover though, for real. Right. Yeah. That's what's up. 
BET weekend. There's so much going on right now, man. That's just like, we got a good chance to have you on the show. And you know Sean, too, apparently. Sean, M- Sean, if you know me, yeah, Mueller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so you guys yeah. work together there in New York. Yeah, Sean's with me at every public. He, he, he holds me down every day. I'm always giving him shit. I'm like, I know they got the, got you out there running sodas and picking nah. up sandwiches and shit. And he's like, no, nah, it's not really like that. No, nah, I didn't really like that. You know, which shit, when I was an intern, that's how I was. Right. But now it's more um, it's more geared towards, you know, actual things that you can Get benefit. stuff done. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? But you know what? I think that's almost a gift and a curse, too. Mm-hmm. Because when you got to get sodas and sit and babysit the cars and yeah. stand outside, make sure nobody get a ticket. It, <laughs> it teaches you how to hustle, you know? So sometimes when you take away certain things, it, it, it removes a certain DNA, but I get it. Cause it's, you know, it's a corporation, so right. they can't have people doing crazy things, you know? So you said you started off as a, as, as an intern mm-hmm. for Republic and then you just worked your way up the ranks no, or no, what? No, no, no. I was, I was an intern for Puff. Okay. So that was a different, you know, that's a, that was a different beast. It was a different time. It was a different, you know what I'm saying? And when was that? Uh, I got, I got to puff at, uh, I want to say I was 15, 14 going on 15. And I was in high school and I was in New York. He was doing TRL. I went down. Damn, I haven't heard TRL in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I forgot I, about TRL. I begged some homies for a job and they was like, all right, whatever, man. But they let me, you know, they let me rock. They gave me an address. I came the next day. I put up posters. The street team and we had posters and stickers and flyers and all that type of shit. Guerrilla marketing Gu- at its best. Yeah, on the West Side Highway. Anybody know anything about New York? You should see those posters going way up on the light pole. That, yeah, that was us <laughs> in January. Same climbing telephone poles, slapping shit posters was, up. Shit was real. You got to put in that leg, that footwork, you know, yeah. to get up there. But it teaches you something. It teaches you how to hustle. You right. Know? And and the music business, what people really don't understand, is ninety percent hustle. It is. That's like it. There's no, like, I mean, now I guess you can go to college for it, NYU and shit like that. Uh-huh. But if you ain't got that hustle, yeah. you ain't going to get it done. Right. They say, you know, I see a lot of people, like, grinding at night while others are sleeping. Yeah, that's uh, that's the crazy thing. When I landed, so I was turning to Mene's album. And, you know, I mean, in the ninth hour, if something can go wrong, it, it normally does. Mm-hmm. So I was up maybe three three days straight. And right when I, I, I figured, shit, I, I'm going to sleep on a plane. Couldn't do it. Got the Wi-Fi on the plane, worked all the way through, landed, worked all the way through. And then you know how, like, it, when you really listen to your body, yeah. it was just like, yo, like, if you go anywhere else, I will shut down on you. Right. So I just, I, I was like, I'm done. Yeah, you just hit a wall. I just hit a wall. I was done. And I slept for maybe, like, 12 hours. <laughs> but I'm back now. Hey, we back. It's yeah, the kickback show. I'm, yeah. That's what's up, though, man. It's good to hear that kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's inspiration for people who are hustling and trying to work their way up the ranks. You know, it's good to hear this information from someone who's working for one of the major labels out right now. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like everybody has their own philosophy, I think. My, right. my philosophy is just it comes from, you know, probably I'm I'm from New York. Okay. You know, my dad was born and raised. Born and raised. My dad was hustling. My uncles, my grandma, you know, and then, you know, Puff had that same. He wasn't hustling that way. But. He had that same mentality and it showed me, you know, you can apply that thought process to what we're doing. You right. Know what I mean, and that and I think that's what's important. It's like you can't get somebody on the phone. Like, like don't tell me you left them a message. Right. I'd rather you leave me a note saying I can't get them on the phone. I went to their office. There it is. Like, that's the type of shit that I'm talking about. I mean, I've heard stories of Diddy like hustling a, a newspaper route back in the day yeah. and taking over other paper routes. And it's like literally the hustle. Totally different industry. It's different. Puff will tell you, Puff will tell you, I think my mic, there you go. Oh, there you go. Puff will tell you, go do some super impossible shit, and you say how, and nigga was like, figure it out. Figure it out. Boss up and make it happen, right? Ain't no instruction manual. What Fig- was it What was it like working with Diddy? You know, I was super young, so I, I never, um, I never got the brunt of anything. So, you know, people always talk about that sort of aggression. Like, uh-huh. it was there, but I just... I never received it, so it was cool. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> did you ever meet any other? Uh, did you ever meet Biggie or something growing up in New nah, York? I, you know, I, I, I saw it when I was super young. My dad took me to see Big perform. Okay, which, tight. Yeah, I think it was um, in Harlem, One Twenty Fifth Street. Uh, I forget what it was called. Not the Apollo, but it was like outdoors. Either way, that's real, man. Seeing Biggie yeah. in Harlem, that's like yeah, that's about dope. as real as it gets, right yeah, there. It was, dope. it was, you know, it's one of those things. It was good times back then. Biggie, Jordan, Tupac. Man, that's a good era, right? Good era, man. You got a favorite sports team? 
I'm a New Yorker through and through. Even Knicks? though they suck, I just I ride with my team. I don't be bouncing around like that, man. Yeah. Nah, I fuck with my you city. You got the big Apple hat on too, so you represent yeah. New York yeah, hard. Yeah, I see I it. I fuck with my city, man. But I love up. LA too, though. You know, this you know, these girls out here, you know, this is crazy. Hey, hey. we already know Hollywood, yeah, man. Super wavy. I was listening to the radio last night. One of these guys was talking about all these girls flying in from Vegas and shit, trying to get knocked up by a rapper and whatnot. That shit is real. <laughs> Be careful out in these streets. That shit man. is real. It is real. I tell them all the time, I'm not a rapper. And they said they had Amber Rose out there fucking on Twenty One Savage. You know, and she's like, Rose. no slut shaming. Shout out to Twenty One. Right? They're shout making moves. I went by some 21, some 21 homies was having something last night I went by. So shout out to those guys, none but hospitality. Shout right, to those guys. right. How'd you come across uh, Amine? You know what? It was several things. Um, a couple of people put it in front of me. Uh, one of my interns, um, a home girl. And it, it just one of those things that just kept appearing. Yeah. Just kept like people like, yo, you know this, you know this, you know this. And at the time, it was just because the record was cool. It wasn't because the record was like spiking or anything. Yeah. It was just like, yo, this, the, the video was out and it was like, yo, this shit is cool. Right. I think Purple did the video. I think his name's Purple. Nah, I don't know. I Well, I know. I mean, they directed it as okay. well. You know what I mean? So I don't know if he had a co director. I, oh, I mean, sure. I think he filmed it. I think that uh, oh, okay, this guy it. named Purple filmed got it. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Because the. He already had the video when we signed him. Right. So I didn't, I, didn't, I don't know the And details. that shit went viral. It was all over the radio here, radio waves yeah, in LA. Just, yeah. And I was yeah. like, damn, this is a cut. It kind of had an old school like Timberland vibe yeah, to it, which I liked. Yeah, you know, and he co-produced that. The thing about this kid See, is, I didn't know he produced. Yeah, he co-produced a lot of the records. And what were you going to say? Is the thing about this kid? The, the kid is an artist. I think sometimes, you know, people hear a record and they have, and they try to put you in this box. Yeah. But, the, but the, if you listen to Turf... And I think this is, we shot a, a little a video for Turf. Um, Vivo put it up. So he shot it in a supermarket. Like the kid is super creative. The kid is just, um, it's just different. Just He's just different. Shout out to him. We had a, we went to uh, Roscoe's yesterday. Roscoe's? With the one on Pico? The one on. Uh, La Brea and Pico. Nah. Uh, Grawa. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. No, nobody trying to no no fanboys out there trying to get autographs and shit. No, nah, he got he got a couple. Um, I, we just I just signed this other kid named Willa Rapper from DC. He has a record called Pull Up Hop Out. So he was there. This other kid band hunting. Actually, Wiggy. we're gonna be playing that on the show today. Pull Up Hop Out. Yep. Yeah, he's day in town. Will, that just released not too long ago, yeah, right? Will Izzy, everybody in town, man. We gonna make this a family affair. You know, I try to keep everybody that I sign. I try to keep them together. Kim Vieira, who I just signed, is out here too. Who's I, that? Kim Vieira. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, nice little wave. So this whole squad's out here right now. Yeah, everybody that I sign is out here. So this is a popping weekend. Every year this weekend, BET weekend just jumps off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything pops off. There yeah, might yeah. be violence. Be careful out there. There was like shootings last year. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. After you parties that go to the sun comes up. I mean, you name it. Everybody's doing something. You know, I tell people all the time, man, you know, life is short. You here today, you, you're not here tomorrow, so you better go hard today. Ain't that's really, right. You know. Damn, that shit goes. Yeah, yeah. That's that was what, actually my first time hearing that song. Yeah, that's that's you know that's that's real rap right there. Charlie Wilson too, man, came in hard at the end. Yeah, young boy got bars, right? You know he gonna give you, you know he gonna give you the shit that's current, you know, but he's gonna give you bars too. Like don't get it fucked up. I, you know, I put it on my man. You know, I like like I got some. He can go with the best of them. I put the money up. Like he, the kid can rap, man. Like for real. You talking about Charlie Wilson? You talking, talking about me? Talking about me? Yeah. Like don't don't get it fucked. His up. visuals are legit as fuck yeah, too. Yeah. Don't get it fucked up, man. That's what's up. And then, uh, man, I'm excited for the album. Straight yeah. up, like I feel like good for you, every July song. 28th. Yeah, good for you. Every July 28th, I swear, like every song I hear that's leaking out or coming out, like the singles are dropping yeah. before the album, are yeah. all dope. So yeah. now the rest of the album's got to be tight. And I've been yeah. hearing rumors on the streets that it's tight. So yeah, it's tight. We got to keep it cracking. Yeah. So I was gonna ask, as an A and R. For Republic, mm -hmm. what does that mean? So for people who don't know what an A and R is, um, or what does A and R stand for? First, first art, off, artists and repertory. Okay, we're we're the we're the division of the label that brings in the music. We bring in the artists and we help them make the music. Okay, so I always <laughs> I always say the A and R department is like the father, the marketing department is like the mother. We just the sperm. We just we just shoot it up. And they gotta carry the baby, so it's always we always gotta make sure that that marketing is excited about the shit that we sign. Got it. 
you know, because then if they not, then it's just kind of like. So as an A&R, you're the one that signs the artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're constantly on the search for new people or? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know that I'm constantly on a search, I but I'm constantly, I'm aware of everything. Got it. Yeah. That's got to be a pretty tight position. You're constantly hearing new music and, and all these artists, and you're kind of scanning the net or whatever, scanning the industry for, for the hottest track, right? Y- yeah, I mean, I get it because, I'm because again, even though I'm young, my mic keeps cutting out. How old are you? Not. I'm 32. You know, I sound, I'm old, but but um, the thing, you know, I got into this thing a long time a long time ago, so before the internet was really even popping. Yeah. So I, I still sign things based off word of mouth right? and gut. You know, I'm in hustle, right? In hustle, yeah, yeah. Like, so, I mean, the new wave is kind of like, what are your numbers and all that type of shit? But I don't, you know, I don't sub- fully subscribe to that. You know, I don't. You gotta, you gotta know where the business is so you don't get left behind. So mm-hmm. that's valid. You know, people who do do that sign off numbers and all that type of shit, and gotcha. I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying that's just not how I came out. Okay, so, so every a A&R, and is different with their yeah, approach. Yeah, everybody's different. Everybody has what works with Peter doesn't work with Paul. You know? Right? Is there a lot of A and R's up there? Yeah, yeah, we got a good staff. Okay, like yeah. what? 10, 20, 30? Uh, maybe like I wouldn't say like fourteen. Okay, maybe seven New York, seven L A. And you guys all manage like a like a handful of different artists. Yeah, we a lot got, of division because I know that Republic has a, a wide range of music yeah. that you guys represent. Yeah, Ariana, The Weeknd. Yeah, I mean, Both. those are some of the biggest ones. And I've, yeah. I've been on the website and seen, like, Tell I mean, I feel like every major artist yeah, has we, done something with Republic. Yeah, we got them. Right? And how does that work? Because it's like you look and you see all these key players, and then it's like Republic. it looks like Republic's just running the scene. Because that's true. <laughs> Can't lie about that, right? Yeah. But no, no, the, the you know, so when you sign something, you're responsible for it. But the thing about Republic is we kind of operate like a like a gang. You know what I mean? So... Excuse me. I have um, Willa Rapper and uh, Ben Hunter Izzy. They're just starting their projects. So I'm uh, we got a studio locked out for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And here in L.A.? Here in L.A. Nice. And, and all of the West Coast A&Rs are helping me get writers and producers in the room. Like, because we operate as one. Gotcha. So even though they didn't sign them, they're just, they're on the email chains. They're like, this guy, this guy that I'll book this. Like, everybody's equally invested in everybody's shit. Gotcha. We help each other. Ain't no egos. Ain't no... We do projects. Shout out my my man Patch. Um, we do a mean name together because we both came on him at the same time, but from two different angles. Is he an A and R as well? He's A and R, so we do for it Republic. To, for Republic, yeah. Okay. So we just we do it together. Ain't no like it ain't hundred percent of zero still zero. Yeah. So that's what motherfuckers don't understand. Yeah. Like it ain't. If I take fifty percent of a hundred any day rather than hundred percent of zero. Yeah. Motherfuckers be selfish. Something better than nothing. Yeah. I don't, I ain't, I don't subscribe to that. That's yeah. The, that's the fuck shit. We unsubscribe to that shit. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, Will the Rapper. Mm-hmm. Where, where's, where's Will from? D.C. D.C. Shout out to Omar. And how'd you come across Will? It was just young, aggressive energy, man. You know? So that, that hunger and that drive yeah. can really catch someone's attention from what I'm getting from you. Yeah. Like for me, when you when you out there and you just, you know, a lot of us don't have options. As far as you know, girls? Nah, nah, nah. Types of weed. Some in here. <laughs> some in here is fucking with my allergies. I'm like tearing all over the place. Oh my god, why are you crying? Yeah, no, some just, allergies. You're making my eye water up. shit. <laughs> but now nah, we don't. You know, when you come from a certain situation, yeah, you be the play ball or you rap or you, you know, you know, you a lot of them ain't going to college. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you know, Will is just one of those kids. Who, and DC can be a rough city to grow up in too. Hell yeah! If you ain't by the White House, this is what the shits out there. Right. Man. Anything outside of the White House is pretty much hood, with from what shits, I get. Yeah. I mean, you got like Georgetown's cool, but you know, Baltimore and all that. That you know, it's the murder capital. Right. You know what you think? Young boys, young boys is out here wilding. Yeah. Philly, Chicago, it's, it's real. You know? I actually just met a dude from Baltimore, and he was telling me all about how they were riding and how he's like, "Yo, it, that shit was real as fuck." He was yeah. like, "It was crazy." He's Nobody. like, "We were in the streets and people were just going in." Is is you know, we, the, the the thing that 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 I'm you know obviously the police killing us is is something serious. Yeah, I just saw recently. Um, what was it the? Uh, yeah, yeah, Costello. Yeah, yeah, the dude who got the dad. Yeah, yeah. The, the school, like he worked at a school. He was like yeah, a good yeah. dude, man. That yeah. was heartbreaking because I'm a father. Yeah. And so the kid I. was in the car and I was like, man, that kid has to live with that the rest of their life. If I yeah. grew up and I was that kid, I'd be like, fuck the police for you the know, rest of my life. You know what? Kill my dad. You know what? I remember this is, this is a real lesson. 
when I was young. I was in the South Bronx, right? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, like my family was kind of like, like you, like they built a, a reputation. So I never really had to be in the streets fighting and all that type of shit. Cause you know, people just had genuine love for me and had love for my, my family. But it was this one kid, man, like he didn't give a fuck about none of that shit. And he wanted to fight. He just really wanted to fight. And I was just like, just yeah. anybody and everybody. No, or just I, you? No, nah, no, nah, it was just me. Beef. Um, and and so I I wasn't really with it. So I I went upstairs. And my cousins was there. Like they didn't beat him up because they knew him. Yeah, you know they was like, nah, you got to fight. We're not gonna beat him up. Yeah. We know him. So when I got upstairs, You're like that's and, your fight. Yeah, yeah. When I got upstairs, they told my dad, and my dad looked at me. And my dad's a you know I show you a photo later. He's a big dude. Yeah. You know when you get punched in your stomach. Yeah. And it takes all the wind out of you. Yeah. He hit, I mean, he, I, I swear he hit me with all his might. It took all the wind out of me. And he was like, do you think that kid hits harder than me? And I was like, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, are you dead? And I was like, no. He said, then go back outside and fight. Hell yeah. Right? And I That's went a back, power move right? from and my I, dad? Yeah, and I went back outside and I fought. And it was, and then it was all good. Yeah. But see, the problem, and, and I said to say, the cop in that situation was so scared. He was so scared that he took somebody's life Un for yeah. no reason because he was scared. You could tell he reacted because he, yeah, he was scared. Yeah, because he was scared. Like, like it was like I, instant. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, be and not all cops, but a lot of people become cops because they were picked on or they didn't have no power or whatever the case, and they're so scared. Like I think people just need to just go get punched in the face. I think to be a cop. Man up a little bit. In police academy, you just should be standing there and get punched in your face. And if you can't take that, you should quit. I agree. That should be a part of the police yeah, academy. Get, because you can't be so scared of everything that you you so quick to shoot. I literally had the same conversation last night. I was talking to my brother. I was like, man, I was like, that dude was probably the kid who got bullied. Yeah. You know, he was the kid who's like a little a little bitch growing yeah. up, you 100%. know, and whatever stuff had happened. So now he's hiding behind the badge and 100%. he's got a gun. Now he's got a little bit of power. 100%. So he's that dude to be like, no, you yeah. know, and shoot the gun yeah, or whatever. I was like, I could tell you the type of dude that is. 100%. And then you see a cop who's like, Who's been through it? Who maybe is tough and was right. raised in the hood or something like that? And he's out there trying to put out a good right. message and take it. care of the kids and shit like they, that. You know, you know, you see cops a couple times. You see a cop, he's like, "Yo, come here." Yeah, he's like, "I know what you're doing." Yeah, exactly. Stop. And I've had a couple warnings myself, yeah, and, I, stop. and I'm respected. I respected right. the police. Like, hey, thank you for that. Right. Yeah, that's because it's like a lesson learned. That's you know, real. and it's hard. You can't just. I mean, like, you know, everybody want to say fuck the police because they're trying to blame that one incident on yeah. all the cops, but not, all, not cops all the cops. Like that. It's not all the cops. Shout out to the Portland show. Right, so, yeah. it's not all the cops though, you know. But it's it's the, again, we can't be, we can't be, we can't have scary people with guns. That's that's not that ain't going. Yeah, do it. and and that and that's that, jeopardizing the, the and force. You know, and you know what? Not for nothing. That that goes for us too, killing each other. A bunch of scaredy cats out here with guns, scared to fight. Go fight. Yeah, put your fists up. Yeah, be done. Like with on it. Friday, what was it? Craig's dad was yeah. like. Yeah, like Friday, yeah. Man up. Man up. Get your hands together and, and yeah, fight. Yeah, you ain't going to beat up everybody. That was basically the same thing your dad yeah, did for you. Yeah, go fight. You, you don't need everybody, you know. Listen, you know, but everybody ain't playing by those rules. So, you know, I understand that too. Yeah. You can't bring your fist to a gunfight. Ain't that the truth? So. I want to get up on this uh, Will the Rapper. You said he's yeah. from D.C., right? Yeah, from D.C. So, DC well. kind of puts on. I remember a while back, uh, I met an artist named Tabby Bonet who was from DC. And that was the first time I ever got put on to people from DC music, period. Yeah. And he was like kind of cutting his own videos and making music. But then I started finding all kinds of other people. And I got a chance to tour through DC and see what it was all about. But DC's tight. Yeah, they, you know, there's a couple people. I think um, like Baltimore, Baltimore, that whole area, I think Meek just signed somebody. Um, like a couple people getting, they, that's an untapped think, market. So I think Meek people. and his crew just jumped some dude. I just saw that on oh, the tabloids man. recently. Did you hear about that? No, nah, I don't know. Nothing. Some dude. Yeah, Either way, nah, he went nah. on his Instagram. Was, it was on World Star. That's what I saw last yeah. night. And he was like, yo, he's like, Meek, you a little bitch. And I was like, damn. Nah. They're kind of going in right now. You, you, you know what, man? You, you, rap beef. What, what are your thoughts life. on rap beef? <clears throat> I feel like some people do it for publicity. I think this is what I think. I think, you know, a lot of us come from nothing and when you get that kind of money you know they 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 want to throw us in jail you saw what they did to bobby they watching they watching us so we gotta we just gotta move extra you know and i don't know what happened i wasn't there mm -hmm. um but you know just as a general note i think they watching us and they you know they don't somebody had the record 
they don't want us in their community. They don't want us in their gated neighborhood. Right. And when we get money like that, you know, we just got to be mindful. That's know? true. People, I feel like people are uh, get intimidated. Or they don't know what to think. And that's when I played that song, that J. Cole song, Neighbors. Yeah. And you were asking, like, what song is this? That song was based off of uh, a raid that happened at his house. And they thought he was selling dope. Wow. And he wasn't selling dope. He wasn't even there. Wow. You know, and it was like, my neighbors think I'm selling dope. That's real, though. Yeah, you know, and it's that's... like, and it was in a nice neighborhood. You know, fat-ass house, nice neighborhood, and probably someone was intimidated or scared by the presence of, you know, I was at, something different. I was at this place. My man, uh, Christian, owns it in New York City. It's called Hunting Fish. Fly shit. You, like, you bring your wife there. Or if you got a girlfriend or a girl you're trying to take out, just impress, bring her there. She, That's the spot. You're going to get it that night for sure. What's it called? Hunting Fish. Hunting Fish. What the, a perfect name. The, the bill is going to be crazy. But hey, you know, but you're but, getting some ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we sitting at me. Uh, who, I'm at the table. Is Jason Flom, the legend, the record guy. Nice. Sign Kid Rock and a bunch of people. Yeah. Um, uh, Rodney Jerkins. A um, couple people. I think Nick Cannon came, but he came later. Did you have a bad one with you? Yeah. Of course you did. Facts. But <laughs> but the but the people at the next table was just like like when they were leaving and getting their bills, like, which one of y'all is the rapper? We know how this goes. Yeah. And we just looked at them like, what? None of us are the rapper. Yeah. None of us hear rap. Don't profile. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. No. Is that is that was your response? Yeah. Everybody must have just looked at him like, "What are you even talking about?" Yeah, we just was we. Were, I was puzzled by it. Yeah, and they had like big smiles on their face, so they probably didn't mean no harm. Yeah, but it's just sort of like, nah. They wanted to go home to the kids and be like, "We met so and so." Yeah, just but just the way they went about it was it's just like wrong. not. Yeah, which one of y'all is the rapper? None of us. That's a mean a Caroline triple, triple platinum. Triple. July twenty eighth, we can expect the album. What's yeah. the What's the title <clears throat> of the album? Good for you. Good for you. That's right. And it's going to be good for you, too. It's going to be good for you, yeah. We can expect a lot of big things from him. I, I see Amine blowing up. He's already on the double XL. Yeah. You know, the the the, the singles are hot. One after another. I was bumping, uh, was it Red Benz? Red Mercedes. Red Mercedes. Yeah. That shit got, goes. You see, uh, we put a remix with Missy Elliott just because, you know. No shit. Is that already out? Yeah, that's out. It's in the streets. Uh, we're going to have to get that. That's just, you know, that's just that was just for the culture. Just, you know. I was just for the culture. That was it. Wasn't trying to sell no records or nothing. That's just for the culture. Man, that's gonna sell itself. Yeah. So you know, certain these people don't understand. People don't understand. I'm cutting out. There you go. Certain people don't understand certain things that like some things are commerce and some things are culture. You know, so culture is just as important. I agree. I agree. If you could give any advice to up and coming artists, what would you say? <clears throat> For musician, musicians going after that 1% spot. N no, it's not a period. No, it's a pause. It's a comma. No, it's not a period. It's a comma. Somebody okay. tell you no, just, you know, say thank you for your time and keep going. There it is. Yeah. They, people don't know. Do you have a favorite hip-hop artist? All time? All time. Or like, like, or like, one, like, or like, you know, like right like, now. Or like, how about both? Right. One all time and I got a favorite. I, I got a favorite song right now. What's your favorite song? That uh, that Playboy Car that Playboy Cardi record in New York. I merely rock hotter than my socks. Yo, that shit. Yo, the weekend I had a concert in New York, and uh, and Playboy came out. The building was shaking. Shout out to my man Pat. Shaking like what? People were just going wild. The or Building what? was shaking. Shout out to my man, Pat, man. That's a, you know, I'm proud of him for that. That's a, he's a good dude, so he deserved that win. This is a win. Shout out to Playboy Cardi. Playboy Cardi. All right, that's dope. We're going to play that next. Uh, where can uh, the listeners find you on social media? At St. Haraway, S-A-I-N-T-H-A-R-R-A-W-A-Y. And it's across everything. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, all that. Well, thanks for coming on the show today, Saint. We, it's glad having you here on the Kickback at Dash Radio. Yeah, I Until next time, y'all. We out here. In New York, I'm Millie Rock. <laughs>